I had a video a while back on how to find break. I had a video a little while back about how I could take pictures of things that I thought would be interesting on a projection mapping project and put it in After Effects, prep it, mask it, et cetera, and then save it out as an image that I can use in my projects more easily. So this is kind of a follow-up to that. I've, I have some images that I've found and prepped, but I've also added some animations to some of them. And so now I want to reuse that animation too in future projects. Uh, you know, I, I come from a IT background, and so I'm kind of big on the concept of only doing things once if possible. And so if I do some kind of cool animation, I don't want to redo it down the road on a different project. I want to do it once and then just reuse it. And so, for example, I've got this tree that um, that we added to this project. Next, let me just moved it. Um, and the tree, I wanted it to kind of be blowing in the wind as you can see here. It's a, it's a simple animation. I didn't do anything too fancy. I just did some keyframing um, to, to make it move a little bit in the wind so that as, as the project's moving forward, the tree's wiggling. But now that I got that done, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to do the keyframing again. There was lots of keyframes, as you can see. So uh, here, here's a, a quick process that that you can do once you have your animation done and you like it to save it out, to prep it and to save it out so that you can use it in future projects. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into a pre-composition. I'll right click on the tree that I had the effect, the animation on. Click pre-compose, tree animation. Maybe I'll call it tree wind animation. Move all the attributes into that comp. Now, if I open that up, and it's actually a black tree on a black background, so I can't see it. So I'm going to just add a solid white layer temporarily so that I can just see where the tree is. And so this is what the tree looks, the tree animation looks like by itself. And I might spend some more time to make it look a little bit better, but it's good enough for now. Um, so I, I want to think about how, to, how I can make this reusable and make it easy to use. And so one of the things I'm going to do first, it's not as big of a deal with this one, but I'll, whenever I have an image in here, I'm going to want to, to scale it up and have it feel as much of the composition space as, as possible. And ideally, the composition size would be something like 1920 by 1080 so that it's uh, that, that's a common resolution, common width and height that's used in projects. And so that's just going to make your lives easier if you can match to that. So um, this one scaled up pretty good already, but I did notice that my composition isn't that size that I just described. So I'm gonna come up to composition, composition settings, or you can do control K. And I'm gonna change this to 1920 by 1080. Okay. And then my solid white layer, we're gonna scale up. I can press S on my keyboard as a shortcut, and then I can just scale up the white. And then let's do the same thing with the tree. I'm going to center it and scale it. So let's move it to the middle, scale it up. In fact, I might even rotate it since it's kind of a longer image instead of wide. Um, so I can, I can press R as a shortcut to get this rotation property and I can turn it sideways. And then back to S to scale it and get it to be mostly centered and mostly filling up the space. So it's gonna look like this. And since it bends so far that way, I probably should scoot it up just a bit. Good enough. Um, I, I could even expand it lengthwise, maybe I'll do that to just so it's filling up as much of the space as is available. And then once this is saved out, where the composition lines are, that's where the handles are gonna be so you can adjust it. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, um, got it adjusted, fill in the space, I'll hide the white layer. Now I can just save this out as a 
as a video with a transparent background. And now I have a tree animation I can use over and over again. So to export it, I'm gonna to go to file, export. And for most of my shows, I, I use the Adobe Media Encoder um, so that I can get an MP4 file, but uh, I don't necessarily have to do that here. I, I can just do the built-in After Effects render queue and click on add to render queue. And then it's gonna give you these options here. I'm gonna click on lossless. And for the format, change it to QuickTime. That's gonna give me a .mov video that has a transparent background. And to make sure that it's a transparent background, I'm also under channels, going to click RGB plus alpha. And then click okay. I can click on this to change the name of the file and choose where it's gonna go. I'll just put it on the desktop for now. And then I can click render. Oh, I, I did remember one other thing too that I could do, but I think it's probably fine. Um, this, the length of this tree, I made it really big. It looks like I made it 12 minutes, which means it's gonna be a massive file. So I think I actually am gonna come in and, and shorten that because the .mov files with the key depth background, really big. They tend to be really big files. And I know space is cheap, but within reason. So <laughs> maybe I'll do like a two to three minute clip and I can move this bar over here so that it renders out just that segment. Now, what, what's going into that decision on how long to make this? Uh, I, I want to be able to loop this video pretty seamlessly, which I didn't do anything special to make sure that it would. So I run the, if I do it really, really short, if I do it like 10 seconds, I'm, I'll probably have a really awkward looping point when the video ends and starts up again. It's probably gonna look really shaky and, um, and odd. And so if you make it longer, then that's going to eliminate those seams that you run into. Make it too long and the file's too big. So I'm trying to find that sweet spot in the middle where it can have good looping, but also not be a huge ginormous file. So I'm just gonna do three minutes and we'll try that. Okay, saved it. File, export, render queue. Change this to QuickTime and RGB alpha. And that's fine where that's going and I'll click render. And depending on how long it is, how complicated the animation, all that kind of stuff will determine how quickly this is gonna go. And so it looks like it's gonna take a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. Okay, that's done rendering. So now if I have a scene in here where I want to add that tree, then I can just drag that in and it should function. Let me find one that would look good. We'll put it on the project. And yeah, it might be a little hard to see on here, but there you go. There's the tree with its transparent background. You can rotate it and resize it to how we want it. Every and room has walls. There it moves. It's not actually where I'm going to put it, but you get the idea. <laughs> so that is uh, a way that once you've done some kind of cool changes to, to an image and created an animation, uh, you can then save it out for using it in future projects.